Okay, so this is the outline of chapter 32. Okay, so we'll introduce the Gauss law for magnetic field. So in chapter 23, we have already learned the Gauss law for electric fields. Okay, so here we'll also learn about the uh, uh, Gauss law for the magnetic field so that we will complete the whole uh, Maxwell uh, equation. Okay, and we'll also introduce the um, induced magnetic field induced magnetic field and then introduce displacement current so that we'll add this thing to the Ampere's law to make it complete okay and actually the textbook call it Ampere Maxwell's law but yeah some other um, textbook or, or other material just call it Ampere's law for the whole thing so yeah just just a name I, I, I don't think it's very important Okay, and then later on we will talk about some uh, hardcore physics. So you just regard it to um, uh, like uh, listening to a story <laughs> because it is quite hardcore. Okay, so uh, so here we will talk about the Gauss law for magnetic field. Okay, so as I mentioned before, uh, in the world we can only have uh, magnetic dipole. Okay, so it says. Um, Gauss law for magnetic field is a formal way of saying that magnetic monopole do not exist. Okay, we we cannot form the magnetic monopole. Just just say uh, this is a magnetic bar. So this is a dipole. Okay, so it will generate the magnetic field line like this. Okay, so from starting from the north pole and then going like this, like an like an apple. Okay, so uh, if you try to cut it to several pieces. And then each piece will form a smaller uh, magnetic monopole like this NS NS NS. Okay, so even a primary student will know uh, should should have known this. Okay, so okay, so actually uh, the law asserts that the net magnetic flux phi b through any closed uh, Gaussian surface is zero. Okay, so like what we have done for the um, Gauss law for electric field. Okay. So we'll define a Gaussian surface, which is a closed surface. So it is actually the same thing, uh, unless uh, except except at that time, uh, this is E. But here we 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 consider the B field. So this is the uh, integration of B dot d a. Okay. So how to calculate it is the same. So the only difference is uh, here is B field at that time is E field. Okay. So. So the point here is like this, uh, the integration of uh, B dot dA for a closed surface should be equal to zero. At that time, uh, the phi E or um, E, no, epsilon naught times phi E is uh, actually like uh, epsilon naught integration of E dot dA equals Q in close. Okay, as I mentioned, this kind of um, this kind of uh, equation have a duality, okay, which means that you change e to b, and then you change epsilon naught to one over epsilon naught. Okay, so e change to b, and then epsilon naught change to one over mu uh, naught, and then it becomes this one. But you you say oh we we can't see the one over mu naught here because on the right side is zero. So if you just multiply mu naught on both sides then mu naught mu naught cancel and then y side is still zero so we don't need to write one over mu naught here but actually uh, the duality is like this okay now of course this is q in close and then you change to something like the magnetic monopole and then magnet magnetic monopole does not exist so on the right side it should be zero so that it's that easy so which means that um suppose uh yeah suppose yeah, this is a many bar, and then you try to define. Oh, this is the surface one. Of course, this is in three three D, and then you try to calculate the B field going e going out and going in, and then yeah, if it is going out, you can count it as positive. If it is going in, you count it as a negative. Yeah, the the idea is actually the same. So you for every point, you just define the d a, which is a perpendicular to to the point. Uh, to the plane at that point and then okay oh, and actually that is da and then you you have a b dot da at that point and then you just add all of them together so that is a uh, surface integral 
uh, for example, for, 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 for this pawn, um, da would be something like this, and then the b, uh, b pawn to that way, so b dot da is somehow a negative value. So, yeah, the Gauss law for magnetic fields tells you that, okay, so, for example, uh, if this is surface one, okay, this surface integral should be zero. And for this one, uh, this surface integral is zero. Arbitrary closed surface, for arbitrary closed surface, this surface integral uh, is always zero. Okay, so contrast to this Gauss for the electric field of phi E is actually this one, okay. Uh, so I think this is nothing special, okay, because uh, we, have, we, we, we have done quite a lot of uh, uh, example about this one and for the magnetic field it is even simpler because we don't need to care about what is Q in close okay we don't have any uh, magnetic monopole so it's always zero so it is even easier okay so next uh, we talk about something called uh, induced magnetic field okay which is related to the displacement current uh, which is this uh, related to displacement current okay so actually here it says uh, a changing electric flux induce a magnetic field B uh, it is called Maxwell's law okay so this textbook just call it Maxwell's law like this and then later on uh, it combine Ampere's law and Maxwell's law become Ampere Maxwell's law just like the PPAP <laughs> You know that song, <laughs> the pineapple, uh, pen, pineapple, apple, pen. Okay, so just combine the pen and apple, uh, become uh, apple pen. Okay, so it's just like combining Ampere and Maxwell's law together to become the Ampere and Maxwell's law. Okay, so if you still remember the Ampere's law, okay, hope you remember because you need to have a quiz next week. So for the Ampere's law, Ampere's law. So it is something like the surf, uh, the line integral of b dot ds is uh, uh, mu zero i in close. If you still remember, yeah. So um, yeah. So in chapter twenty nine, we already quite uh, do do quite a lot of uh, examples about about the Ampere's law. So you can see on the left side. Uh, this is integration of b dot ds uh, for the cross uh, loop uh, okay or the contour and here we also have the same uh, same uh, same thing on the left hand side on the right side is different okay for the ampere's law it is mu naught i in close this i in close we assume it to be a dc which means a static current a static current okay it doesn't change uh, depend on the uh, it does not depending on the time okay so it just have a fixed value here we assume that if we have a uh, yeah so here you can see still see this uh, mu naught but uh, here we have i in close so this part it is e naught d phi e dt okay so if we have this uh, electric flux changing to a contour, uh, electric flux changing to a contour, then it will generate B field. Then it will generate B field. Okay, so you can you can compare these two. Okay, at that time, uh, if we have a static current, let's say this is I, uh, let's say I zero, and then it will generate B field, something like this. Here, it is a little bit different. Suppose uh, this is a capacitor. Uh, this is a capacitor. And this is a current, I from left to right, and then charging this capacitor. This is a, yeah, so there should be a, the same current I going from left to right. Okay, so discharging. So positive charge will be accumulated on the left plate, and then negative charge is, uh, will be accumulated on the, on the right plate. Okay, so in that case, the E field is actually changing. Uh, if you still remember, B, because because uh, this E field, oh, this E field, do you still remember? This is this E field is actually uh, sigma over epsilon naught. Uh, if you still remember in chapter twenty two three and or ch chapter twenty five. Okay, so 
yeah this is a parallel plate if we have a if we have a charge okay so this is the charge uh, surface density surface density okay so as much as uh, there are some current going in which means that there are some charge also going in you see i is uh, dq dt so we assume that this i is a uh, static current uh, just assume it to be a, a, a static current. So if I is a constant value, then Q is actually increasing. Q is increasing, which means that the charge density is also increasing, which means that the E field is also increasing. So in that case, if we just draw a uh, Ampere loop, Ampere loop, the Ampere loop is actually, is actually uh, like this, okay? This is just a like like a cross section. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know how to call it. Okay, so the Ampere's law is actually uh, we assume it to be a circle, but here we just look at it from from that side. So uh, in this figure, we just we can just see a line, uh, but actually it is a circle. Um, yeah, including including this uh, capacitor uh, area. Okay. So actually, this is the Ampere loop. Um, this is this is that thing. Okay. So here we assume that the E field, the E field pointing in uh, in this figure is pointing into the page, but here the E field is pointing to the right side. Okay. So if it is increasing, if it is increasing, so when you consider, and then we also assume it to be uniform. Oh, this is uniform. So uh, phi e equals integration of a uh, um, uh, not not closed surface, actually integration of e dot dA. Okay, so a doesn't change. E is uniform and increasing. So it is just like e times a, and then this thing is increasing. So phi e is also increasing, right? Okay, so here we can see phi e is actually increasing. Uh, yeah. Okay, so in that case, uh, this so-called Maxwell's law will tell you that, um, yeah, so it will generate a B field. It will generate a B field like this. Okay, here, the E field pointing into the page is increasing. And then here, we will generate the B field. Okay, it is also somehow similar to the Faraday's law, but it is the other way around. For the, Ampere's, uh, for the Faraday's law, uh, it is actually like this uh, integration of e dot ds equals negative d phi b dt okay so at that for, for the Faraday's law the changing magnetic flux uh, changing magnetic field will generate E field here changing uh, E field will generate B field okay so if this is changing generate if E field is also changing and then it will generate a B field again okay so that's uh, how the electromagnetic wave works. Okay, and then we will learn the electromagnetic wave in the coming chapter, in the in the next uh, chapter. Okay, but anyway, here we can also consider uh, this one with the Ampere's law and this one with the Faraday's law. Hmm. Through the loop is changing the. Okay, so yeah, so we can just skip it. Uh, yeah, so here uh, it write out the Maxwell's law and also the Faraday's law, so we can do some comparison. Okay, so for the Maxwell's law, we can we can check out this figure, and then for the Faraday's law, we can check out that figure. So there are a little bit different, a little bit different. They are somehow similar. So you can still see uh, for the same uh, Ampere loop, and then there are some um, cross, which means that the E field, for this one, E field is pointing into the page. For this one, B field is pointing into the page. So this, e, this changing E field will generate B field uh, clockwise, but for this, B field if it is uh, changing like uh, both of them if four of them are increasing uh, here the E field is counterclockwise so the direction are different uh, the direction are different 
Okay, so set, uh, so it says they are similar. These two laws are similar, but different in two ways. Okay, so for the first one, mu not epsilon not appear for matching SI unit. Okay, so it means that here we have mu not epsilon not. Uh, here we don't have anything, but of course, um, yeah, you can also consider if there are there are n turn, you can just uh, multiply by n, but this number of turn is not a, 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 a it's not an SI unit. So this this multiply by n does not have, have any dimension. So here it's just like multiplying by one. But here it says that okay. So here you can con consider the SI unit uh, for the B field. Uh, what is it? Uh, for the B field. Uh, I, yeah, actually I. <laughs> Yeah, so this is a B view, the B view, the dimension of a B view, and then this is this is meter. And then this is the dimension of E view. Dimension of E view, and then the time is S, and then mu zero F and not. Okay, mu zero F and not. And then here, the dimension of E view, and then this is meter. And then this is the dimension of B view, and then uh, time is s okay so yeah so actually uh, yeah this makes the uh, the dimension on both sides match okay here we don't we don't need, need this one and actually this this factor is uh, very important in the next in the next chapter you you know that actually uh, it is related to a very very important um, constant called the speed of light we also uh, we usually uh, write it as c equals one over square root of mu naught epsilon naught. Okay, so this is the speed of light, which means that in different inertial reference frame, uh, the speed of light uh, in the vacuum is always this value. It's always this value. Okay. So I, I just mentioned the inertial reference thing. Uh, inertial reference thing. Inertial reference thing means uh, in Chinese it's called uh, guan xing, guan xing zhuo biao xi. Okay. So uh, it is also related to the special relativity. Ah, special relativity. Of course, in this semester I will not teach <laughs> the special relativity because uh, it's uh, uh, due to the limit of time. In the past semester, I have. Uh, uh, torch uh, special relativity like the chapter 37 and also chapter 38 for the quantum mechanics okay but yeah in this chapter I, uh, in this semester I, I won't I won't teach those uh, so of, of course if you have interest you can just check out my um, YouTube channel you can you can also uh, learn learn them uh, if you have interest yeah, so actually for the special relativity, uh, it has a assumption that yeah, the speed of light is a constant in different reference frame, uh, different inertial reference frame. This is uh, yeah, out of your mind, out of your mind. Because in primary school, what you learn in mathematics class is like, uh, just say if A is moving uh, uh, 6 meters per second to the right side, and then B, is uh, moving uh, four meter per second to the left side. Okay, so A will feel like B is moving ten meter per second to him. Okay, and so as so as B, B will feel like A is moving ten meter per second to him. Yeah, but actually, if uh, yeah, this is also, this is of course correct if the speed is low. But if the speed is quite high, that is not the case. Just say if you are at the reference frame. This reference frame is uh, inertial reference frame, which means that it is moving in a constant speed. If this speed is just say this is uh, one half of C, of course C is very large. C is like a 2.99 A times 10 to the A meter per second. Okay, so which is really, really fast. Okay, so if this V is a uh, half of C, and then of course there's uh, in the world, there may be some light uh, shooting on you. Okay, there's some light, there's some light or, or any kind of uh, EM wave. Okay, maybe it's shooting to you. Then, of course, you are in this reference frame, moving 
half of C to the light. If you still uh, consider, or uh, it should be like a vector sum, okay, you feel like the, the light is uh, like a 3C over 2 moving towards you. Okay, but this is not correct. Even though you are moving a half of C towards the light, you will feel like the light is moving C, <laughs> the speed in of C towards you. Uh, or if there, if you um, if there is some light, okay, in this direction, you will feel like the light is uh, moving C uh, away from you. Okay, so this is very very strange, but this is the uh, assumption uh, for the or or it is called the postulate. 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 Uh, yeah, postulate. The assumption for the for the special relativity. Okay, but yeah, anyway, this is a little bit out of the scope of this uh, chapter. So I just slightly mentioned it. Okay, so let's come back to here. So yeah, this is related to the SI unit. Okay, we, we, we need to add this term so that the dimension on both sides matches. Okay, so here, the, the next point. Okay, we have two points uh, similar. Uh, uh, two points uh, that are different. Okay, so the second one is the negative sign. Okay, you can see uh, for this one, this is a positive value. Uh, for the Faraday saw, this is negative on the right side. Okay, so the negative sign for the Faraday saw means the induced electric field. So this one tells you that oh, this is counterclockwise. This is clockwise. Uh, yeah. So yeah. 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 Okay. So so yeah. So it says if the magnetic field directs into the page is increasing. Oh, if we assume that both of the field this uh, for this one E field is increasing, B field is increasing, then the induced B field should be clockwise. This one the induced E field should be counterclockwise. They should follow the right hand rule. Okay, still the right hand rule. <laughs> okay, still the right hand rule. The right hand rule means yeah you just use your thumb pointing into the page so your finger will be like uh, uh, in this direction okay yeah your thumb pointing into the page here you also use your thumb pointing into the page uh, this is the positive direction but here we have a negative sign so the e field is counterclockwise so that's this that's the idea okay so yeah Okay, so as I mentioned, in chapter 29, we have the Ampere's law. We have this one on the left side. And then for the Maxwell's law, okay, there's still the same left side, but with a different right-hand side. So you may ask, oh, when should we use this one? When should we use that one? Of course, um, yeah, you, you should consider, like, uh, if the, this I is a static current, then static current. Uh, then, which means that uh, it does not change uh, uh, at a different time. Okay, then we use we sh we can use this one. Uh, uh, but here, if we have some current is uh, yeah, or if we have some uh, changing E view, then we should use this one instead. Okay, but yeah, but. The idea is like uh, sometimes we need to determine or oh, we should use this one. Uh, sometimes we need to use this one. So why not we just combine the right side together so that finally we just write the same left hand side. We have this one to stand for the static one. Uh, this one for the time rearing run. Okay. So if it is just static and then we only have this term and this one to be zero. If we only have a time varying E field then this one is is non zero, this one is zero, then it will just uh reduce back to this this case or that case. Okay, so so we can just uh uh happy to use this one. And then in this textbook it just call it the M Pre Maxwell's law. M Pre Maxwell's law. Yeah, but yeah, some other material just call it Hampere's law for the whole thing. Okay, but just just a name, it just doesn't really matter. Okay, so in this textbook, it's just call it Hampere's Maxwell's law for the whole uh, equation. Uh, yeah, so he it says when there is a current but no change in electric first, 
the first term on the right side of the equation is zero, and so the equation reduces to Ampere's law when there is change in electric fuzz but no current. Uh, then the second term on the right side is zero, so it will yeah reduce back to the Maxwell's law. Okay. So and yeah, so actually, uh, this will be one of the four equation in the Maxwell equation. Uh, one of the equation, yeah, in the Maxwell equation. Okay, so here we have a sample problem. So it says a parallel plate capacitor with a circular plate of radius r. Okay, so we assume this is a circular plate with radius capital R is being charged. Okay, so so this is the current charging the capacitor. Okay, derive an expression for the magnetic field at radius small r. This small r is smaller than or equal to capital R. Okay, so this is just a cross section. This is just a cross section. Okay, so which is just like or you. Uh, you cut it uh, somehow like like here. So, so this is the ambient loop. And actually, uh, here the R is smaller than capital R. So, in this case, this R is like smaller. Okay, so maybe half of it is is the small R. Okay, so this is this one. Okay, so here, uh, because it only includes the time varying ele uh, electric field without the static current, so we just simply apply the Maxwell's law. Okay, so on the left side we have uh, the surface line uh, the line integral for uh, b dot ds, and then equals mu naught epsilon naught d phi e dt. Okay, so ju we just write out the Maxwell Maxwell's law. Okay, so similar to what we have uh, um, explained, so uh, b and ds will be uh, pointing to the same direction. So it is just like uh, b times ds and then b is uniform over the loop so finally it turns out to be b times 2 pi r okay that's always okay so um and then here mu not epsilon naught and then this phi e phi e okay so we assume that the e field is uniform over the whole thing so originally phi e is like integration of e dot dA. Here we, we don't have a closed closed surface. This uh, the surface is just like this one. It's it's only uh sorry it's only this part. Uh, the surface is only this part. It's just a just a circle, not a closed surface. So we don't have a circle here. Uh yeah so and we just assume that uh, E and DA is uh, parallel and then e, e is uniform. So it is nothing but E times A. E times A. A is the cross-section area for this circle. Okay, so it becomes E, D, E, A, and then D, T. Okay, and then A doesn't change, so we can just put A outside. So it becomes E naught epsilon naught uh, a and then d e d t and then this is a circle so a is nothing but uh, pi r square pi r square and then d e d t okay so on the right side we can also write a b times 2 pi r b times 2 pi r we don't need to change anything Okay, so finally we can just um, do some cancellation because this is pi, this is pi, this is r, this is r. Okay, and then we just need to move two to the right side, and that's the that's the answer. Okay, so this is uh, nothing but b equals uh, mu naught epsilon naught small r over two and then d e d t okay so this is it and then for the part d evaluate the field magnitude b 
for r equals capital r over 5 okay so we just need to plug in the number so let's recall p equals mu naught epsilon naught r over 2 and then times de dt then we just need to plug in de dt as this value and then r equals this value and then of course we know mu naught and r uh, epsilon naught okay so mu naught is 4 pi times 10 to negative 7 and then epsilon naught is uh, 8.85 times 10 to negative 12 and then times r is 11 millimeter 11 times 10 to negative third all over 2 and then times de is uh, 1.5 times 10 to uh, the 12 power Okay, so the answer is uh, 9.18 times 10 to negative 8 Tesla. Okay, <laughs> I just now I just forgot the SI unit for the B field. Yeah. Okay, so this is for part B. And then for part C, it asks you uh, when R is larger than capital R. So here, oh, yeah, uh, so here, yeah, this uh, circle is, is, yeah, so this, this amplion loop is, is larger than this, this is capital R. This time the small R is like this. So this time, yeah. yeah. This one should be the ambient loop for, for this part, okay? And then still, uh, B field is, should be pointing to the same direction, but of course, the expression for the B field is not the same thing. So we can just try to calculate it out. So here we have a integration of B dot ds, and then equals mu naught epsilon naught d phi e dt, okay and uh yeah for the for the left side it is still the same thing uh, b times 2 pi r okay because this is this is small r this is small r okay and then mu naught epsilon naught and then this thing this thing becomes uh, a times uh, d e d t and then this one this one this a only only counts this part which don't count the outside part okay so the area the cross-section area should be pi capital r square rather than small r square okay and then for d e d t okay so here we have a pi r square d e d t okay so similarly we can do some cancellation uh, pi and pi cancel. R can and capital R can be cancelled. Uh, they are different. Okay, so finally we have a uh, B equals mu naught epsilon naught capital R square over two R and then times d e d t. So yeah, so this is not that difficult. And then, okay, so let's finish this part. Okay, so it says the displacement current, the displacement current, it introduced another term called displacement current. And just now I already mentioned something about that. Yeah, because you can see for the, for the Ampere Maxwell's law, you can see uh, this is, uh, integration of b dot ds on the left side and then this part refer to the original Ampere's law just now the Maxwell's law look like uh, mu naught epsilon naught d phi e dt okay so which means that when you consider the um, consider the dimension consider the dimension okay this dimension should be the same uh, should have the same dimension at this term and also the same dimension at this term okay here we also have mu naught multiplied by a current okay and then this one mu naught multiplied by 
a big term. Okay, so which means that these two terms should have the same should have the same dimension, should have the same SI unit. Oh, yeah. So which means that oh, this is a current. So this thing should be something like a current. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So actually, uh, the physician just call it the displacement current. So you can just regard it as the current going through a capacitor. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, so which means that uh, this one is this thing. So they just they just define the displacement current ID to be epsilon naught d phi e dt. Then finally, they can just write it as this uh, line integral equals mu i in close and then mu zero i d in close. Okay. Okay, so where ID enclosed is the displacement current in, in circle, in circle by the integration loop. So you just can also consider it like, uh, so originally if it is like a current enclosed, enclosed by a loop, okay, then if this current is enclosed by the loop, then it will come, it will come. If the current is going outside, then for this loop, it, it won't come, it won't come. This one won't come, this one will, will come. Okay. Similarly, for the for the displacement current, yeah. So this is a definition. Okay. So why we can consider this one to be the to be the um, current for the capacitor? You can you can consider it like this. Uh, suppose we have a ID equals uh, epsilon naught d phi e dt. Yeah, so we just verify it for the parallel plate capacitor. Uh, parallel plate, not pre parallel plate capacitor. Uh, parallel plate capacitor. Yeah, so um, for the parallel plate capacitor, we also assume that uh, the E field is uniform. So it is just like uh, E times A, and then we can just move A outside. So it becomes epsilon naught A. D E D T. Okay, so this is the first step, and uh, we can try to uh, divide something, at something, and then multiply the same thing. Just like we just divide it by D, and then multiply it by D. Okay, you you can consider like uh, this is the the capacitor. This is the capacitor. Uh, A is the cross section area. Uh, and then D, D is the distance between the parallel plate. Okay, so here we just divide it by A, uh, divide by D, and then multiply by D, so that nothing change. And then we also have some uh, E field pointing, uh, suppose this is positive, this is negative, then there is some uh, E field pointing to the right side. Okay, so here we can see that this term and this term have different uh, yeah, expression. Yeah. It's just like we just uh, construct this part. Okay, for the parallel capacitor, if you still remember, the capacitance C is epsilon naught A over D. Okay, so this is epsilon naught A over D. So we try to construct this term out. Okay, so it becomes C. Okay, and then here, D E times uh, E times D DT E times D, okay. In chapter twenty four, if you still remember, V equals uh, E times D. Of course, uh, generally V equals integration of uh, E dot dS from negative to positive. If you still remember in chapter twenty four, <laughs> okay. So uh, so actually, uh, if uh, E is uniform and then parallel to the to the path, and then V equals E times D, just like the high school case. So in that case, E times D is V. So this is D, V, D, T. Okay, looks similar. Okay, so this is actually I, D equals C, D, V, D, T. Okay, this is the equation for the, for the capacitor. Okay, uh, relate between the, the, the voltage and the and the current of a of a capacitor. So you can 
just regard this one to be the current of a capacitor. Okay, let, let's just finish this part before we have a break. So here, uh, it also mentioned that the displacement current, uh, yeah, so, so here it mentioned that if, um, yeah, suppose this is a capacitor, and then we have some current, uh, some current I or ID, this ID is actually I, so you can just consider this is ID or I. Okay, so if you consider the the B field, yeah, with a smaller for smaller distance to the to the to the origin, then B field will be mu zero I D over two pi R square R. Okay, and then if uh, R is so this case R is uh, smaller than capital R. R is smaller than capital R. So then, as done by previously, the magnetic, uh, the magnitude of the magnetic field at a point inside the capacitor at radius r from the center is this one. So here, if r is larger than or equal to capital R or equal to, then it will be mu zero two r uh, mu zero i d over two pi r. Okay, we have do something similar in chapter twenty nine. So I don't try to repeat uh, a chap uh, not not page. Chapter twenty nine, okay. When we try to calculate the, for the static current, okay. So here we just consider this current going in a capacitor to be the displacement current. So, so the derivation are very very similar. So we don't. I I don't think we we will uh, we need to really come uh, repeat it again. Uh, and then you can see um we have a similar expression, like uh, if we have a if we have a current, and then yeah, uh, with a current I, yeah, and then this current is uh, uniformly over the the the, the wire, and then uh, inside inside or outside or uh, outside it uh, for R larger than or equal to R, B will be mu zero I over two pi R. If it is inside, yeah, this is proportional to small R, something like that. You you can try to practice it at home. If you are interested, if you really can't uh, derive it out, then you can ask me later. But I think I think you can just follow the derivation in chapter twenty nine. They are actually the same thing. Okay, so here here we have a quick uh, sample problem. Uh, so it says the circular play, uh, parallel plate capacitor is being charged with a current I. Okay, between the plate, what is the magnet, uh, magnitude of this one in terms of mu zero and i at the radius small r equals to capital R over five? Okay, so it's just like this one, or even smaller. This is r, and then uh, this thing is capital R, like this. Okay, so um. Okay, so actually it is nothing but integration of B dot ds equals mu zero i d in close i d in close. And actually this i are going through yeah, going to to the to the whole thing. So we assume that yeah yeah, actually the, the E field is uniformly distributed. So for the inner part, yeah, we just have something like uh, I D over E in close over I D. I D is actually for the whole thing. I D is actually I. It's actually this I. So we can just write I D or later on we put it as I. And then equals pi small r square and then over pi capital R square. So this is the whole, this is the whole current. Uh, this is actually I. This whole current for the, for all the, for the cross section area. But here we only consider the inner part uh, because we, we would like to calculate this thing uh, 
at small r equals to capital R over 5. Okay, so id in close equals pi r squared. Okay, we assume that uh, all the e fields are, are uniform. Yeah. Okay, so in that case, uh, we have uh, id in close equals i and then times small r squared over capital R squared. Uh, pi and pi will cancel each other. Pi and pi just cancel each other and then we move it to the right side. Okay, and then we, we can just plug in this one to there. So finally, we have an uh, integration of b dot ds equals mu zero i and then r square over capital R square. And then as much as we know, small r equals to capital R over 5. So it is mu zero i and then r over 5 square and then over r square. So r square and r square cancel each other. Finally, it becomes uh, mu zero i over 25. Like this. Okay, so for part B, in terms of maximum induced magnetic field, what is the magnitude of the magnetic field induced at uh, this one uh, inside the capacitor? Okay, so this is a uh, pretty trivial. Just now we rewrite, we already write that uh, this one equals to this one. Yeah, if we have a arbitrary small r, it, small r is uh, smaller than capital R. So uh, actually this is correct, uh, this is correct for any small r is smaller than capital R, okay, smaller than or equal to, is, yeah, okay, so for this, for this term, for this term, it is nothing but uh, B, times 2 pi r, b times 2 pi r. So it equals to mu zero i r square over capital R square. So we can just uh, move this thing over, or maybe we can just cancel one small r with, with this square, okay? So finally, we will get b equals mu zero i over uh, 2 pi uh, we still have a r here and then r square. So which means that b, uh, maybe we can write it as a b of r. b is a function of r. So this thing is proportional to small r. Uh, it's proportional to small r. So which means that b max, b max should be b of capital R. So if it is uh, even larger than then the B field will decrease. So B max is actually B of capital R. Okay, so which means that, which means that uh, combining of B is proportional to R and then B max is actually B of capital R. So uh, B of small, uh, B of small R over B max should be R over capital R. Uh, R over capital R. Or you can just write it as a B of small r equals to R over capital R and then B max. Uh, that part, uh, this is small letter. Small letter. B max. Okay, so here we have a R equals to capital R over 5. So capital R over 5 over capital R and then B max. Uh, B max. Okay, so finally it becomes B max over 5. Uh, B max over 5. Okay, so finally we have finished uh, all the four Maxwell equations. So the first one is called the uh, Gauss law for electricity. Okay, so which is like uh, yeah, this one we learned it in chapter twenty three. Okay, here in this chapter we also talk about the Gauss law for magnetism. 
So in this chapter, chapter 32, and then for Faraday's law, for Faraday's law, we learn it in chapter 30. Okay, so we know that for the changing uh, B view, we'll generate the E view. Okay, so in, yeah, so for finally the M pre Maxwell's law. So half of it, uh, this part we learned it in chapter 29, this part we learned it in chapter 32. Okay, finally it becomes a M pre Maxwell's law. Okay, so it also tells you that uh, changing E view will generate B view. Uh, changing E view will generate B view. And then of course a static one will generate B view, but for static current, it generates a B view which is also static. Okay, so this B view due to this current will not further change to E view anymore. But if this E view is changing, and if it is also generating a time varying B view, then this time varying B view will also generate E view, and then going back and forth. Okay, so yeah, so we um yeah we slightly yeah so so we have a uh, complete to talk about the Maxwell equation. Actually, all of them are not so most of most of them are not related to Maxwell. But finally, we call it Maxwell equation because finally, um, Maxwell just uh, summarize. Yeah, of course, in at uh, at that time is like the 19th century 19th century in the 19th century the uh, electromagnetism has developed a lot so different physicians or scientists uh, just uh, write out different laws just like uh, we also learn the Biosafa law or whatever Coulomb's law many many different laws they, they will still be useful for for different situation, but finally Maxwell just uh, summarize these four. Okay, if we only have these four, we can still um, uh, manage uh, different um, different different problem for the electromagnetism. So that's why the Maxwell equation is uh, named after uh, Maxwell or uh, James James Maxwell. Okay, in around. 19, 18, uh, 1855 uh, if I remember it correctly uh, it should be uh, yeah uh, a summarize around that that moment okay so let's have um, uh,